It's a cool overcast morning here in Eurocaster, Albania. So we're starting the day with a nice hike to the Ali Pasha Bridge. It should be a beautiful hike on the way up with some amazing views at the end. Well, we were just filming a bush and the, <laughs> the guy who I guess was the owner of the house, we were just filming his bush because it looked nice. He came out and handed us some fruits. And he said the fruits are from the tree. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they are. They taste like apples and he was very sweet and that yeah. was so cool. Yeah, they were really good. Oh, and that, then was he, so, that was so sweet. And then he was like, Ali Pasha? Ali Pasha. <laughs> <laughs> and, then we, and he directed us where to go. Super nice. He brought us both handfuls of fruit. <laughs> and yeah, they're pretty good. I find it really funny that a lot of times when we encounter somebody and they realize we don't speak their language, they assume about half the time that we're from Germany. They're, they, they don't even ask where we're from. They just ask if we're from Germany. I never realized how much European travelers consist of Germans. And it seems like, especially in the last few weeks, a lot of people have assumed we're from Germany. Do you hear all the bells? Yeah. <laughs> There's bells in all directions from the sheep. I think they're just right there. Oh, maybe they're just echoing over there? No, there's there's a oh, there is some over there's there. some over oh, there. That's so funny. I don't know how to make this make sense, but looking at this view of this canyon, this these mountains, it feels like, especially with like the haze and the overcast, it feels like I'm in a video game, like in like a VR video game. This feels like it looks fake, but like in a really cool way. Like it looks amazing. It looks crazy, but it feels fake, which feels weird. <laughs> yeah, the, did you mention the haze makes it look like that? Yeah. Yeah. Because it looks like kind of muted colors a little bit. So it just feels like I'm seeing it through like a VR lens. I think another thing that's messing with me here is I really can't tell how big the bridge is. Like my brain is trying to tell me that it's something that like a train could cross over. And I know that that's not true. So I think my lack of good depth perception is another thing that's making me feel like we're looking through a VR headset. I don't know, feels weird. We are currently being serenaded by the song of the goats which is just they all have bells around their neck and there's a bunch of different ones and they're echoing everywhere so it just sounds like there's bells coming from everywhere and it's constant we're actually about to pass oh they're running they're, we're about to pass a flock or a, the goat equivalent of a flock of goats <laughs> I don't know what specifically it is about this hike. I mean, it's nothing too out of the ordinary for us. We're doing a beautiful hike up to a beautiful viewpoint. We do that a lot. But something about this hike is just giving me such a surreal feeling. Like, I think most of it is walking past the shepherds, or not possible that they're called shepherds, but the people with the goats and the sheep. It sounds like shepherds. It just feels like a very local, unique experience. Just this is very different. It, it feels very different than other things that we've done. It feels very, I don't know, it feels crazy. I'm really happy that we're here doing this. The bridge that we're walking up to is the Ali Pasha Bridge, and it's actually not a bridge. It's an aqueduct that was used during the time, or was built during the time of Ali Pasha, who was a ruler of this area. A, ma a majority of the aqueduct, the stones were removed from it and used to build parts of the castle, like the prisons. So this is <laughs> this is part of very little of it that is still preserved. So that's why it's such a popular place to walk down and go see. Every time we come to a structure like this, I'm always amazed at how it was built hundreds of years ago. Like, it's such a massive aqueduct, and the fact that it's suspended so high in the air, it's just, it's incredible to think that, that people were doing this hundreds and hundreds of years ago.
I was surprised that once we caught up on there, it felt a lot wider than it looks. I thought it was going to be just feeling like I'm gonna fall off on either side while I was walking over. But I also <laughs> thought that there were gonna be walls on it, but it's just completely flat up there. <laughs> so that part was a little scary, but it felt very sturdy and yeah, it was pretty wide. So actually it wasn't that scary. <laughs> We saw a blog about this place that mentioned that the bridge was not is structurally secure or something. And while I was crossing, that was in my mind the whole time. So I just was picturing the bridge collapsing with me on top of it. I think that was just that blogger's opinion though. No, 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 I know. Realistically, I knew that wasn't going to happen, but it was still scary walking across it, <laughs> especially because there are no walls. Right now we are a bit outside of the main part of town, but even in the old town and everywhere that we've seen of this town, it's super hilly, like the most hilly town that we've been in. So we've definitely been getting a lot of leg workouts these last couple days. It's some, yeah, some pretty steep, intense hills. I've been surprised that the whole town is like that. It tastes like a Christmas drink. Really? It's so good. It's like, a, it's like spiced. It's really interesting. I love it. That's actually really, really good. Wow. If you want to see a different reaction of Marshall's trying <laughs> some Raki, check out our video from Barat where it was not flavored and his reaction was quite different. <laughs> it makes a lot more sense now why Marshall's face was not the same as it was in Barat. This is not Raki, it is uh, it translates to carnation. So we don't really know what it is, we can't find anything online. So if anybody knows what, what how did you say it in Albanian? It's like Billy. Cotterfield. Cod yeah. Or what is, I'll, I'll, I'll put it on the screen. Cotterfield. If anybody knows what that means in translated, if there's strings like this anywhere else, we can't find anything on it, but we're very curious. So, um, yeah, probably not alcoholic, definitely not as strong as Rocky, so that's why Marshall's expression is better. <laughs> I got the fried meatball and it comes with some yogurt sauce, which is a perfect refreshment for the very heavy meaty taste. It's awesome. Yeah, just like a fried meatball. The other thing we got here is a mixed plate. So we got three different things. One of them is a traditional corn pie, I think is what it said, and it's specific to this town. It was originated. It originated in this town. And something else is some spinach for it. And I don't know what the third thing is. I don't remember There's what it is. There's a meat said. one, right? There's a meat one? I think so. Okay. Apparently there's also a meat one. But we've only tried one of these before, so I'm excited. I think this will be a lot of new flavors and traditional good flavors. Um, Which one's that? I have no idea. <laughs> Two of them look pretty much exactly the same to me. And one is a spinach one and one is something else. And I don't really know, but that was good. They seem like they were, it reminds me, this kind of meal reminds me of a quiche. I've yeah. also only had a quiche like once in my life, so that may not even be a good, <laughs> good comparison. <laughs> That's really good. Mm -hmm. I think there's just a lot of spinach in both of these. <laughs> I think so. It looks like it. It also has some feta on it, which is always a good addition. I don't think it even had meat in it. Really? Mm -hmm. I think that one's my favorite though. It's very simple. Does it taste like corn? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, this flavor analysis is sucking. <laughs> We also brought a spring cake before we left. That was so great. 
we passed that restaurant on our way up to the bridge and the waiter said hi to us we said hi back and we came back by and sat down and he immediately brought out a bottle of water and those two drinks and he said thanks for coming back and i thought that was really sweet then he also gave us some cake at the end of our meal and i don't know that's just so sweet such a nice little touch it's a very popular place it was rated like best um best of the best among travelers so like they see a lot of tourists it's not that they were surprised we stopped there but we just thought that was so nice and such a nice touch to just make our experience a little better yesterday we tried to visit the cold war museum but we couldn't find the entrance and we were very close to the closing time so we're on our way there now to try again we still never found the entrance yesterday so hopefully we can find it but we'll see how that goes i have no idea what this is don't really think this is it but this looks closer than anything we found yesterday. All right, well, we made it to where we were yesterday. Let's see what we can find now. There's nothing up here yesterday, so I'm not feeling hopeful for this time. So I guess we were in the exact right spot yesterday. We just didn't know that they only do guided tours and they do it on the hour every hour. So since we got there yesterday within 30 minutes or about 30 minutes before the museum closed, we had missed the last tour. So that's why we couldn't find anything. But now it is 2.20 and we are gonna try to make the tour at three. So we're gonna go get some dessert while we wait. I'm happy there wasn't a tour until three. <laughs> After our quick ice cream intermission, we are back at the Cold War Museum. I think this should be really fascinating. It's gonna take us through a tunnel that I think is probably included in one of the 178,000 bunkers throughout Albania. And we've been really wanting to see more of those. So this is exciting. Long time. <laughs> so we are very excited to be able to go into another one. <laughs> The museum turned out to actually just be a tunnel and then there was a guide who took us through and showed us some of the different rooms throughout. It was definitely the least polished museum of all those that we've been in. It, the only money that had been put to actually making it into something to show was adding lights. So other than a few rooms, it was pretty much completely black in there. At the beginning, we went through four steel doors that were the atomic doors. And the reason it was completely empty was that after the fall of communism in 1991, the people of Yarocaster found out that it wasn't a bunker made for them. It was made just for the party elite. And so they went in and just completely ransacked the place, stole everything, destroyed things. And so that's pretty much the state that it's left in now. It was really cool though that there were still some original pieces of furniture and bed frames and just crazy, I don't know, crazy to see, imagine people working and living in that kind of environment. They said nobody ever did, right? Other no, they never ended up having to use it. We were under the castle that we went in yesterday for some of it. And what, 90 meters below? Yeah, I saw the like maybe. And I was fine. I was managing my panic until he said, what did he say two years ago? Like yeah. up to two years ago, a part of the bunker had collapsed. He's like, you can go look, but don't go too far. It's dangerous. <laughs> like, <laughs> two years is not a long time. That makes me very nervous walking through it. But we made it out alive. Yeah, the, the majority of- Oh, here, of... look, you can even see the castle. So Yeah, so we were just under, in a bunker under that. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> the majority of the rooms in it were actually just um, office rooms. The purpose of this was to help operate the government and the military in the event of a nuclear war. There are actually only three of this type of bunker that were built. One's meant for doing government operations. And the reason that the only two outside of, Tor or the only one that was outside of Tirana was built here in Eurocaster was because the former dictator Enver Hoxha um, was born here. And so he spent a lot of time coming back to Eurocaster. So they thought it was a great place to have it here. Our guide mentioned that maybe one day they, they would get funds to kind of re refurbish the bunker, but, but I honestly really liked that it. it was just really unpolished and it just, it felt so real. And I feel like I could picture, it, it just, it didn't feel like a museum. It felt like you were walking in an abandoned bunker, which was just yeah. absolutely crazy. <laughs> 
it was only two euros or two dollars a person to go into that museum. It was a half hour long tour. I'm so happy we did it. That was, I'm not a huge fan of museums a lot of times, but I think that one was really, really cool because it was, it was just, you were walking through the actual thing. So it was, I thought it was fascinating. That's going to be our last stop for the day. It's been a really amazing time here in Eurocaster and we hope to come back, but we're going to continue on with our road trip and we'll see you in the next video.